Hello, this is Paul Toomey at Presentation Tree, a PowerPoint visual storytelling and presentation design company located in Seattle, Washington and serving clients all across the United States. Today we're looking at Iconic PowerPoint, How to Make Icons, Part 2 of 3. In this three-part series, we have already looked at importing icons that have a transparent background and editing them. And if you haven't seen that yet, please watch that before you watch this one. Today we're looking at how to remove the solid background. Sometimes you're going to get icon art that has a solid color background and you'll need to remove it. So I'm going to show you the, the easy and right technique for doing that. In part one, we had icons that had transparent backgrounds already and we learned that uh, the secret was to slide the brightness tool to 100 percent and that turns the icon white and allows you to place it inside of a colored shape such as this blue circle and uh, when you create a set of these it, you end up with a wonderfully visually consistent set of icons that uh, gives the presentation a lot more visual power and also uh, professional polish and you have the option of making the colored shapes uh, connect to the colors that are associated with your branding identity. So there's a further advantage as well. So here's an icon that I took off of Google Images and again in part one I provide you some very important information about finding images and taking them off the internet. This image as you can see has a white background that we need to remove. If we double click the icon art, it pulls up the picture tools tab and the format ribbon. Now many people like to use uh, a tool called set transparent color, which is in the color palette window. This is not the right tool to use. I'll show you why for two reasons. One, uh, if I uh, apply the tool simply by clicking uh, white, basically when I click on white in this art, I'm telling the computer make all the white pixels transparent. As you can see, it's not a very clean process. And uh, if I attempt to then make the rest of the white pixels go away, <laughs> we, we, we get a frustrating result. So it's a problematic tool uh, for that reason. But also, if you do end up getting a clean removal of the background, uh, the trick of sliding the brightness to 100% does not actually work because the image just vanishes. It doesn't turn white. So not the right tool for the result we're looking for. The tool you want is remove background. When you click that tool, you get a, a baffling series of pink boxes laid over your image. If you look closely, you'll see that some of the image is black and some of it is grayed out. Uh, and what we want is, of course, all the, all the image to show, but I'm going to show you what it, look, what it looks like. I'm going to click outside of the pink window, and that basically uh, snaps us back into normal view. So the black parts that we saw are visible and everything else is removed. Well, it's great that everything's removed, but we obviously want the entire like symbol. Not to worry. Simply double click on the art, go back to remove background. It's all still there there is an inner box that has handles. I suggest grabbing the handles on the sides and uh, either making the box bigger or smaller as you need to. Now this is not a perfect tool but the advantage is that it's in PowerPoint so you don't need something like Photoshop or you need a web-based tool like Pixlr to go and try to work and remove the backgrounds. Once you learn this technique you can use the tools in PowerPoint to do it very quickly. So you can see now that I've gotten the entire black outline of the like symbol which by the way is a not so subtle uh, hint that I would love for you to like this video or this blog post that you're watching. Uh, but the interior of the like symbol is white now. So uh, sometimes you can get rid of that by adjusting the borders of the box, but now the top of the thumb's cut off. So there's another tool that we can use up here in the upper left. We have a mark areas to keep and a mark areas to remove. Notice when I select that tool, my cursor has changed. So I'm going to click inside of the white and nothing happens. Well, like I said, it's not a perfect tool. Sometimes you have to do this several times. There we go. 
And now we can use our trick of sliding the brightness tool to 100%. And there we have our icon. I am, as I said, Paul Toomey. I train virtually and I design slides for clients all the time. So if I can help you, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching and be sure to watch part three of this series where I give you further information on the iconic PowerPoint, how to make icons techniques. Thanks for watching.